official history says that such helmets were used by knights of the late 15th century, but it is clear to everyone that this is a reptilian helmet, a classic work of ancient Ukros. I will be making a one-piece forged helmet, which is much harder to do than a welded one, so I'm counting on your support for this content. Intertool helped me with an angle grinder. Well, what can I say? It chops pretty well. Although I suspect the results will be different in your hands. So read the operating instructions. This is 30 HDS steel with a thickness of 3 mm. The dome will be made using the raising method. Thanks to this method, the metal will not stretch and become thinner, but will become thicker. It would take an ordinary craftsman 3 days of work to create a one-piece forged helmet. But if you've been bred in laboratory of Ukrainian reptiloids, at the very least you can do this. And at the most, you can be a fighting goose and bomb crazy Russian propagandoms. I wonder, what the flight time of the fighting goose is to the brilliant mind of the mentally challenged person who thought of our biolaboratories? We've been making ammo since proto-Ukrainian times, so I don't really give a damn what I used to hammer out the detail. But to make such a pronounced chin shape, I still use a special device with the right geometry. By the way, there is a full video showing more about production of this helmet. It is currently available on Patreon and will be available on the How to Make Armor channel in a while. The video is without voiceover. I also have a whole series of the videos on my life channel with the nuances of working with this helmet. Everything that is left behind the scenes. In the last video I showed how to hammer in a drill with a hammer, but many of you wrote about some tool breakages. The trick is that you need to hammer it not with a steel hammer, but with a rubber hammer. Hit it hard and clearly. Then send me a video. Good luck, a life hack without registration and SMS. And you can buy a new drill at intertool.ua. The cheeks are connected to the skull by hinges. Their manufacture will be shown in a full video without voiceover. The planishing of the cheek pieces requires many different devices due to the complex and heterogeneous geometry. Smoothing can be done on the outer and inner surfaces. However, you need to work in such a way that you do not create any burrs on the outer side, as it will be polished later. The more the shape of the device and hammer resembles the shape of the surface to be planished, the better and faster the work goes. To forge the rib on the skull, I specially made a device with a curved leg. Straight devices do not allow you to work like this. Before hammering out the rib, I annealed the helmet in an oven. 
This softened the material and reduced the chance of cracking. The only thing left to do is to make a visor. The material is 2 and 5 mm thick 30 HDSA steel. And now I'll just cut the part with a cutting disc from Intertool. Moses stretched out his arm and God split the sea. And I will stretch out my arm and just split the steel and remove the excess parts of the visor. This magic is powered by your Russophobia. And as you know, it is never enough. Therefore, I have to do some of work like an ordinary mortal. And now I can make a special system for attaching the visor to the helmet. Thanks to this, it can be removed and even in the visor can be put on if necessary. When hanging the visor on the skull, extra gaps must be removed, like this one. Please note that I press the part with my left hand with a hammer, so that it does not open from tapping with a hammer in my right hand. As you know, the breath of dragons melts steel. I'm not a dragon, but I'm good enough to blow the holes out. That's how I live, getting by as best I can. It's an ordinary life on an ordinary Euclid reptilian. What you wouldn't do for an extra like and comment under a video. In some areas, the helmet is up to 4 mm thick. This is too much, 2 and 5 to 3 mm is enough. So I start taking off the thickness and checking with the calipers that are fixed at 3 mm. I 
I do another annealing of the helmet. To make the parts retain their shape better, I welded them with electric welding. I put it in the oven and heat it up to a temperature of 800 degrees. Then turn it off and let it cool slowly with the oven. After minimal corrections and stamping of the brand, I put everything back together and heat treat it. Since this is 30 HDC steel, it is quenched in water. According to the technology, after quenching it needs to be heated to 300 degrees and cooled again with water. After hardening, the helmet was covered with a thick layer of scale, which I removed with orthophosphoric acid. Now the excess dirt is easily scrubbed off even with my hands. I sand the inside with sandpaper and washcloth. This will create an authentic surface typical of medieval helmets. I start polishing the outer surface. First, I go over the surface with 80 grit abrasive mop disc. After that, I polish it with a disc of 100 or 120 grit. Unfortunately, the shape of the chin does not allow me to polish everything with an angle grinder, so I use direct grinding abrasive mop disc. Here I use grid size of 80 or 180. The back of the skull is also a difficult place to polish. Thanks to the fact that I removed the scale with orthophosphoric acid, it is easier and more comfortable to sand. After a disc of 240 grit, I take 180 grit scotch bright and adjust the sanding marks so that they lie flat next to each other. Now I polish with a felt wheel with Goya paste. After that, I use my hands to make sanding marks with 120 grit washcloth. After sanding, I paint the inside with a colorless varnish. This will protect it from rust. The production of the helmet fittings is shown in the full video that will be posted on the How to Make Armor channel. There are 13 minutes of material there, and I had to cut almost half of it to keep the video short. This is a titanium spring. 
It is more reliable and easier to make than a hardened one. The spring with the barrel will fix the visor in the closed position. To prevent the visor pins from popping out, such rings are installed. Now the iron part of the helmet is completely finished and you can see how the armet functions. The cheek parts can be unlocked and opened to the sides. This can only be done if the visor is open. The helmet cannot be taken off the head with the cheek parts closed. The original museum helmet has a narrower neck than mine. That's because my client is an ordinary homo sapiens who does not have a reptilian neck. Now I have to make a helmet liner, but that will happen behind the scenes. I am sincerely grateful to everyone who supports my work, and I am especially grateful to the channel's patrons. The money from Patreon is spent on volunteering.